Good morning all. This is my uh, mate's Hubsan X4 with uh, wires dangling out of it because uh, he went to pull off the propeller and didn't really hold the motor down and ended up pulling the motor out and the wires just ripped off. And I'm trying to work out whether I can put these wires back into the motor and in fact how they're anchored in and why are there two holes per wire. Now I'm going to have to get up quite close to this, um, so this video is going to be probably more a test of my uh, low-tech macro ability than, than anything else. Now it looks like there are still bits of wire uh, inside this motor, but I don't know what these holes are next to the bits of wire. I thought they might be little release holes where you put in a, a pin and you could uh, press and release the pressure on this wire and it would just pull straight out but it doesn't appear to be so I'm just wondering whether I would have have to dismantle this in order to find out exactly what's going on here now after destroying the first hub sand he immediately bought a second one uh, and then proceeded to fly it against the wall repeatedly several times and this one's got a lazy prop but I can't remember which one it is one of these props doesn't fire up so maybe I'll put a battery in this and just uh, run these up and see which one it is yeah so this one if I switch on the transmitter just slow three of the props turn the other one can be coaxed into turning but it's just a bit stiff and seized so I think that motor's probably had it so I think I'll take that motor apart if I can so I've got a shirt pin here from uh, the days when I used to wear shirts. I'm just trying to sort of put a bit of pressure on that blue wire, see if that will release. But there doesn't seem to be anything in there to kind of push against. So I don't think that's a release mechanism. But the only way I'm going to find out is to uh, take this motor apart, I think, which will involve undoing these four uh, little tabs here, but everything is extremely tiny. I'm going to use this bigger safety pin, see if I can bend these lugs out, but I suspect this metal case is quite thick. My camera's very close to the desk, so I keep hitting it. But I can't really get enough pressure using a safety pin. No, I just don't think that's going to work. So how do I get that cover off that motor? Tricky. These uh, tabs aren't really tabs, it's just it seems what they've done is they've just f put some force on the uh, metal casing of the motor and that has just pushed in uh, the casing at that point so huge force would be needed to get that out. I think I'm just going to go for a, a crush approach. So it's not going to be pretty but I think I'm just going to have to try and force hmm, force out this plastic end by repeatedly crushing the uh, body of the motor, but it just seems that things are disintegrating. Oh no, that's got it. Well, I think I see brushes in there, uh, grease, but I think I also see solder. So it's possible the wires are soldered in uh, on there and they don't they don't just unclip neatly. So I think perhaps the idea of fitting new wires to this is not going to happen. Where's the motor body? It sticks to everything because it's uh, this macro mode is a bit low tech, isn't it? So there is uh, no is that? Yeah, I think those are. That's the commutator. I think that's a number of different um, bits of metal there, which the brush is. So it's a standard DC brushed commutator based motor. I'm trying to push out the armature, but it doesn't seem to want to come out. Right, that's come out a little bit. Quite a lot of wire windings on there, more solder by the look of it. I think I'm going to have to pull that out by brute force. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, what is all that? Is that a massive wire? Yeah, it is a massive wire. My goodness, let's get in close to that. 
Yeah, this thing's all wire. It's just an enormous amount of wire. And the wires are sort of folded around at the end and there's a gap up inside the middle and the magnets it would appear to run up inside there because inside the body here it appears that the magnets come well almost two-thirds of the way down the body and sit inside these windings there's just a lot of wire it's just made of wire it's amazing and then soldered onto what looks like five points on the commutator that's certainly not what I was expecting extraordinary construction I don't know how this is made it doesn't look like it's made by machine unless I've just disturbed all those wires I wonder if these are made by hand well now I've got to make something of all this mess uh, so this was the lazy motor the one I've now ripped apart quite tight in there because I think I've crushed the body so I've probably damaged all these windings anyway uh, I've also got this one where the wires were ripped out and I now think that it's going to be impossible to fit new wires uh, so I need to pull a motor with a black and white lead because you've got black and white leads for one direction and uh, red and blue for the motors that go in the other direction I need a black and white lead motor uh, from this one and I'm going to fit it into this first one and get this working again But before I do I just want to have a look at this board because uh, if I can get it out There's a lot of wires going to it, but if I can lift that out I'd be quite interested to see what's on the top of there So there are just two screws holding this I keep knocking my camera because it's very close to the bench two screws holding this board in That one Which is under a piece of enameled copper wire the LEDs have enameled copper wire the motors have plastic coated multi-strand wire I think now is that going to come out enough that I can see what's on the other side perhaps I'll just make it come out uh, well it looks like there are four main chips could probably almost even read the part numbers off those uh, so there'll be a microcontroller a accelerometer and a gyro and a compass and all that kind of stuff looks like there are four switching devices up at the far end there so uh, MOSFETs four only four yes I suppose it's just um, pulse switch mod modulation on each of the four props isn't it uh, LEDs are probably switched on and off directly from the microcontroller there's something there looks possibly like a voltage regulator uh, that one there but yes there's a crystal there as well it looks like the chipset is is four chips impressive oh there's an antenna there as well just on that lower end impressive uh, reduction in sort of scale getting all that lot down onto this very very tiny board nice uh, also on the back of this board there's a five pin thing here which looks a bit like micro USB but uh, it might also be a programming header possibly there's plus there's minus there's RTC whatever that is and there are a few test points here so they may be programming points possibly uh, and then the only other connections are the four motor connections and the four LED connections yeah I'm not sure what RTC is a oh, real-time clock is it maybe Right, so on the left is my donor hub sound, which is going to give up its uh, motor. Get that little rubber bung off. And then I've got to try and find that way of removing the motor. It's a case of just sliding it out, I think, but I can't see how you get behind it. Maybe you push a screwdriver down from the back. Right, so I've just pushed a screwdriver behind that. So let's slide that out. It's just a friction fit. And then somehow I've got to coax that wire out. Well, that's only going to happen if I unsolder this end and then let the whole thing slide through the hole. So just make sure my iron's hot, put a little bit of solder on the end, and now try and get these two wires off. Almost. Okay, the white one's off. 
the black one's off. Uh, white was positive. I'll need to remember that. Oh, that was a bit off camera, wasn't it? Right. Pull this wire up out of its channel, and that can come out. Okay, so that's a good motor. The right sex, uh, A or B. So d the direction they spin in, basically. I'm just wondering whether you could um, simply wire uh, a, a motor up the wrong way round and turn it into the opposite type of motor, but it's probably not advisable, so I'll just use the, uh, the correct motor. Right, that's going to replace the yanked out wires. There's a muck on the end of my iron. These wires that don't go anywhere. Now, if you don't have solder on the end of the iron, it's difficult to get a heat transfer. So you just need to put a blob. My iron has oxidized now, so it's not taking solder very well. Right, those are off. Uh, thread the wires of the good motor through. Can I do it without taking that bung off the top? If I can get them up through that hole. Uh, yes, they're through. Good. Well, I might as well seat the motor while I'm at it. Pull the wires through. Get in motor. And that is just literally a push fit. A tight push fit in the uh, circular seal around the top. Right, let's clean the iron again. But once again, I may need to just tin the tip so I can get uh, some solder flow. Uh, okay, white is pause. No, I'm not going to remake these wires because it would be too fiddly. Back is neg. It's not beautiful, but it's probably going to be good enough. These Nothing moves around in here. Right, let's uh, push it all back into place. Right, let's try and get these two tiny screws in. It helps to have a magnetised end on your screwdriver. I can't see what I'm screwing into. Yeah, that appears to be going into something. Okay, other one. And then just a case of threading all the wires back into these channels. Um, ready for putting the bottom cover back on. And they will come out of the channels when I move the board. You've got to go around those little holes, these little moulded holes. Now this one's going to be the trickiest because it's uh, it's all come adrift. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I've kind of pushed all the wires back in. They're not quite where they used to be, and they're not rooted as well as I would like. But it's so fiddly, I can barely see what I'm doing. All right. Let's screw the uh, body bottom part back on. And see if she flies. Yeah, it's all extremely tiny. It's not a great deal of fun. Right, that's A. That's... This is a B prop. Don't want to push these down too hard because there is a very strange situation which can occur where the plastic of the prop rubs against either the um, bearing at the top or possibly the motor case and the thing has a little bit of drift and then as the plastic of the prop gets hot the friction increases and the, the drift increases and gets worse and I'm sure it's a mechanical thing I did for a while think it was an electronic thing but I'm pretty sure it's mechanical and caused by the friction so you want to leave a little gap so that no plastic is touching anything metallic otherwise things heat up uh, B opposite B and I want an A black there's an A black now I put my thumb and finger between the motor and the prop to ease it off so as I don't do what Mark originally did just yank it off and rip the motor out crazy guy Mark my friend and sometimes boss right let's plug in the battery and see whether we get 
all four props with the remote control. Yeah, that looks quite promising. Let's see if it'll pop off the desk. No. These are all going backwards. It's actually sucking itself down onto the desk. I must have my A and B's the wrong way around. Right, A, B, A, B. That should do it. Let's try again. It flies and blows everything off my desk. Okay, let's see if I can do a sustained flight. No, not really. But it does fly. Good enough. Fixed. Cheerio.